Okay, welcome everyone. This is the December 22nd um, Jupyter IPython dev meeting. It's our last one of the year. Um, and uh, we'll try to keep it brief so that people can uh, get on with uh, their holiday break. Um, so let's see, let's have a quick look at the hackpad. And uh, I'm scrolling real slow to the. Uh, no, let's not have a meeting on the 29th, someone was asking. Uh, let's give people a bit of a break. Um, okay, so I think I'm up first. Um, so I was checking Google Analytics for our um, uh, our grant report, and I realized that uh, our usage stats uh, are actually appear to be going down on NBV or IPython, but I suspect that's because they're probably going uh, now being diverted to NBV or uh, IPython and NBV or Jupyter, uh, I imagine. Is that correct or not? Because we actually have both domains, but we, when I look at um, Google Analytics, we don't have NB Viewer Jupyter uh, on Google Analytics. From the uh, on Analytics, we only have um, of the Jupyter domains. We don't have it. We're not collecting um, analytics on NB Viewer. So I, I think now that the main um, project domain is for this kind of stuff uh, of the notebook is um, Jupyter, we should sort of move NB Viewer to be officially under the Jupyter banner. Uh, but uh, I wasn't really sure who and where um, the, uh, the deployment of this stuff was being handled. So before I filed the relevant issues, I wanted to ask. Uh, uh, Fernando, just from my perspective, um, I personally view most notebooks on GitHub if they register, if they render properly there. So that could be why the traffic is going down. That's also true. That definitely has has had an impact as well. Uh, so I and and I would like to basically clear that that up because it's also possible. Uh, it's also possible that that has had an impact. Uh, that's definitely true. Um, Do you have now, now, that now that GitHub is in the picture, which it wasn't a, a year ago, uh, that has had a, a significant impact. That many people just uh, that's also the case for me. Do you have access to the stats from GitHub? No, 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 I don't. So it would it would be good to have to have a single. Obviously, we don't want to break old links. Uh, so if people have URLs and Twitter links that point to nbviewer.ipython and URLs that are that were recorded somewhere with nbviewer.ipython, we want those to work. But we want all new all new ones to go to Jupyter. We want redirects from the old ones to at least work as a redirect, uh, and we want all new analytics to go just to Jupyter. Um, so if some uh, but this is not an issue on the NB Viewer repo of the source code. It's really of the DevOps and the deployment. And uh, should I file it on the NB Viewer repo itself and it will take it from there? I just wasn't sure um, because I haven't been handling I'm not sure it. This is, I'm not sure if this is the best idea, but it might be good to open it in the ops handbook um, repo, okay. which is private. That way for discussing any sensitive that details, it doesn't show up. Sounds good. Uh, you have a handle oh. on that one, Sophia. Can can you take care of that one? Yeah, sure. Can you just copy? I mean, it could be as simple as copying copying what I put on that yeah. first. That yeah, could be I will do it as the meeting is in progress. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. No uh, grant report work. I'm almost done. I should be uploading that uh, those reports later this afternoon. Uh, okay, the program manager job is done. It's posted. Uh, I have a blog post draft. So the, the job the job description is available and people can start applying. The, the blog post is written uh, and I was just waiting for Brian to have a look at it. Uh, I think he's been busy and because I don't want to delay it further, if uh, anyone else who has access to the blog can give it a once over and basically let me know if they're happy with it, uh, then I will post it uh, literally within the hour. So I would appreciate it if any of you can have a quick look at that blog post and let me know if they think it's okay and we can post it literally now and we can announce it um, so that people can apply over the break. I asked Berkeley to <coughs> put short delays on the review process so that I can interview. We can begin doing job interviews shortly after the break. It's um, fine for me. I read it uh, this morning and it was fine. Okay. I, I read it too this morning. It was good. Okay, then I will uh, I will post it. If you guys have already read it, then I will um, I will click the publish once I'm done here. 
Okay, great. And then please, uh, I will also post that to the mailing list and please uh, retweet, tell your friends, etc. Uh, people can begin applying right away. So we finally have that. Um, worked on the uh, on IP widgets and the NB extension stuff last week. Um, also saw some problems with IP widgets and comms uh, and John nicely already opened a, an issue on that. We'll keep debugging. Um, and worked on moving lab spaces. So when Matthias comes back, there's going to be some new space for him. A brand new um, building that LBL just built um, up on the hill uh, at UC Berkeley. Uh, well, at, above UC Berkeley. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, Min says he can't make it. He had some vet issues. So, John, I think you're next. I think I am next. Uh, yeah. So last week we had an IPY widgets meeting. Um, in that meeting, we discussed what we would be doing for 5.0 of IPY widgets. And I uh, updated the roadmap with, the, or there's a PR against the roadmap uh, repository of Jupyter, kind of describing, uh, summarizing what we decided in that meeting. I went ahead and also opened a PR implementing the uh, changes that we decided to make to the styling API of IPY widgets. Uh, we spent a long time talking about that during the meeting, trying to get it right. Uh, so if you guys could test that and if you have any opinions, please uh, voice them loudly so we can uh, iterate on that and hopefully get a, a nice solid API that we won't have to change for a long time. Uh, I also worked a little bit, a little bit on the notebook last week, um, opened a PR to fix a scrolling bug with LaTeX rendering. Um, I was at Cal Poly Thursday through th Friday, um, and I worked with Brian on the new uh, extension proposal uh, for the 4.x series. I wrote three plugins for that, a tree filter, which allows you to kind of filter what files um, are rendered in your dashboard. I also wrote a lightsaber extension, which adds a interactive uh, an interactive Star Wars lightsaber to your notebook, uh, kind of festive for the Star Wars holiday that's going on. Um, and then I also added a Jupyter uh, lightsaber Yoda extension, uh, just to prove that with this new mechanism, extensions can refer to other extensions and call methods in those extensions. Um, and like most of us, I will probably be away for most of this week. Um, I'm going to be gone partway through today and then uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'll mostly be AFK, but I'll, I'll be reading my email. Um, and that's it for me. Yeah, I think, Carol, you're up next. Okay, thanks, John. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh -oh. yes. yes, you can. Okay, cool. Um, I am not going to bore you with all the details of what I've been doing last week, but it is there in GitHub should you guys have insomnia in the middle of the night or something. Um, as um, John said, I uh, looked a little bit at NB extensions and IPy widgets and wrote some documentation for IP. Is it IPY widgets or IPy widgets? Whatever. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We 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 normally yeah, say IPython, so it sounds to me like IPy widgets, but you can pronounce it any way you want. <laughs> yeah. And the week before I joined, I actually did a talk at UCSD <coughs> um, for the Cinegrid group, which it was an international workshop on um, sort of high speed, high performance um, video. So got to see some things at a thousand frames per second, which was pretty amazing. And I have a link to the presentation that I gave um, with much pages stolen from Fernando's um, presentation uh, earlier in the year. And um, as far as documentation, I think what I'm going to do is um, go through all the repos and put a top level structure to all the documentation with the captions on the left hand side with basically um, the categories listed in the hack pad and although they might not apply to every repo 
Um, it'll at least give us a structure that um, as we go through and um, integrate the documentation more with itself. Um, the last one, um, projects and documentation links, I kind of added last night after reading some of the feedback from Graham Doubledon's um, blog post. And I think it would be helpful to at least have a core set of links along the left-hand um, sidebar in all our Read the Doc repos that at least take you to what are the official um, current docs. And um, so I will go ahead and do some of that work next week. And that's it. And happy holidays, everyone. Great. Thanks. OK, um, I think I am on the hot seat next. Um, so I spent the past week um, adding the ability to mount directories um, on the host as Docker volumes for TempNB, um, which was a pretty oftenly requested feature. So nice to work on getting that out. Um, also pushed a fix for the TempNB issue that I mentioned last week. Um, where containers weren't successfully launching. I uh, opened a PR on the notebook to address a issue that Brian had opened um, regarding auto-selecting on the command palette um, if there's only one search result. Um, and also spent um, some time planning Jupiter Day Chicago, which is coming along very well. We had a fair chunk of sponsorship from Braintree that covers about half the cost. Um, and my focus um, is to just get sponsorship for the last half of costs and also to push the CFP out to um, more community groups. Um, and I'll probably be working on some stuff at least until Wednesday and then Friday. So you 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 mentioned that you had um, you had no um, no women respond to your call for proposals for for yeah. talks. Um, yeah. So I I do know that from from past experiences in in conferences that are, that I've heard from su how successful outreach in 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 improving gender diversity in conferences so uh, I know that Jessica McKellar is reputed is is credited as being one of the people who has had some of the most impact in 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 technical communities in 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 kind of creating fantastic gender diversity and one of yeah. her strategies from what I understand and this is what I've heard third party I haven't asked her directly so I, I may be doing her a disservice by <clears throat> by reporting but this is what i understand she has done is um sort of going directly after people and encouraging women basically contacting them directly and lowering that initial barrier by saying hey here you I would like you to apply to come and give a talk at my event i know that you do great work would you please write uh, an abstract for my event. Um, if you want a hand with uh, anything, uh, I can help you draft it. Or if you need, if there's anything with the logistics that, that is blocking you, uh, let me know and how, and the committee can, 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 can help you. And just that little bit of direct engagement, um, it's not lowering the standards, by the way. It's not saying, oh, we will make it easier for you, or oh, just because you're a woman, we're going to change the standards for you. No, it is saying, we know you do good work. We would like to have you at our event. How can we help you? And that engagement to a number of women that I know have have told me help them say, oh, this is awesome. They want me speaking there. Because yeah. the problem is not that they don't do good work, is that they don't feel welcome because of the work, because there are there's stereotype and there are barriers against them, right? And so the fact that Jessica made them feel welcome all of a sudden made them feel empowered. And they said, oh, okay, she, she's treating me well, I'll do it. And then they went and they did a great job. And then after that, maybe for the next conference, they don't need to 
the sort of yeah. uh, uh, approach directly. So I don't know if there's anything that we can do in that regard. And I don't know if the clock is running out th this time, but I, I have heard, I have heard this about how Jessica about how has Jessica tackled has this problem. Tackled this problem. And in the, in, 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 in Pi PyCon, I think, Pi reached think roughly 33% 33 percent, uh, women participation as speakers uh, in, in, in some of the tracks. So I don't know, I was just I putting, know, that, I was out. Just putting that out. Yeah. Um, no, that's a, that's a good point, and I think and the think onus is on me is on me to find all of the women who use Jupyter Notebook or are in the scientific computing realm in Chicago, which is which is like a challenge in and out of itself. Um, but I've already got that already coming to my head now that you mentioned that, so I'll try reaching. I'll try reaching. And actually, um, Fernanda is totally right because I've helped Jessica the last couple of years. Um, we had several different emails and sort of divided and conquered and sent the emails based on people we knew were speakers, people who might be good speakers, people that we didn't personally know but wanted to encourage them. So I can help you with some of that and also with the um, address book, but it absolutely does not happen unless you reach out first. So. Awesome. Um, uh, other than that, um, nothing for me. And I think Dave is on the hot seat next. Thanks, Veer. Um, yeah, last week, um, spent some time working with Darian um, on the command palette. Um, so Darian did all the front end stuff. Um, and it looks awesome. Um, and we put that together. And this week, we're basically putting that into FOS5 and um, the other example apps. Um, so yeah, that's me. Who's next? I think Darian is next. Yeah, so basically um, <clears throat> I've been integrating the, the front end of the command palette with the search stuff that they've built and um, the, the link that I shared uh, last week basically shows uh, what it ought to look like, but there's some behaviors that still need to be built. And the API for it isn't exactly right. The the um, ability to register new things and to have a way of deregistering as state changes in the IDE is, um, is an API uh, that we discussed last night and I'm working on now. Uh, so I'm just gonna continue on command palette. That's pretty much it for me. I'm not sure who's next. I'm up next. Um, right, so, um, so I spent the week um, finishing up those changes to uh, how foster layouts are specified at a core level. Um, so I started that last week, um, finished it up this week. Um, most of the knock-on effects of that uh, in terms of things that depend on widget and need to update their implementation details, those, that, most of that has been done. I think there's maybe one or two repos left that aren't used very often, so I've kind of shunted them to the back burner for now. Um, added uh, um, some more stuff, uh, working on adding some more features to Phosphide and working uh, with uh, Dave and uh, Afshin on getting the uh, command palette uh, set up and added to Phosphide. Uh, we should have, uh, we, we have a new repo out uh, called Phosphide Example, which we're actually going to develop into a reasonably complete uh, example app that actually does stuff more than just put nicely colored panels on the screen. Um, so that'll kind of end up becoming the canonical uh, example that we point people to about how you actually build something with all this stuff. Um, so that's uh, that's basically what's done and uh, what's in the pipeline. Uh, and I think um, Matthias is up next. Uh, yes, you hear me? Yes, okay, great. Um, so I've uh, mostly worked uh, back on, on IPython on some low-level stuff that I was doing um, a few weeks ago, trying to to get that back to my head and work on that. So a lot of refactor of um, low-level debugging, traceback things, um, and some ideas of things I want to do um, to do in, in the future. Uh, I basically polished a bit uh, 4.1 for the notebook and um, nothing like really fancy to um, to show to everyone now. And that's, that's about it. Next is Damien. Yeah. Do you, have, yes. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, that's, 
Okay. Yes. Uh, really quick. Uh, essentially, last week we had a really great discussion about the MB extension uh, installation and, and activation mechanisms, and I uh, appreciate uh, that uh, discussion. Um, we have been working inside continuing on some notebook uh, MB extensions and server extensions, and we are trying to finish with that work. Essentially, trying to to link the notebook with some uh, tools in the Conda ecosystem. It should be public uh, very soon. In fact, some some repos uh, are public right now, but uh, we should make some kind of announcement soon. I hope. Uh, and I also built the Conda packages for the notebook release candidate, uh, so Conda people could could use it and test it quickly, uh, and that's that's all for me. Yes, I'm last. Um, I've been working on the, the new file browser. I've got most of the features there. You have modal dialogues. You can drag and drop elements to move them. Uh, you can click on an element to rename it in place in the file name. Uh, there's a kernel status indicator to show up as green or red, depending on the, the actual status of the kernel. And if you mouse over to tell you which kernel name it was as a title. Um, so right now I'm working on some visual styling and then I'll be adding the context menu stuff to make it to round out all the features of that. Uh, and there's an open PR against Trooper JR services uh, because while I was dog fooding it to work on the file browser, I noticed some API limitations. So there's some cleanup there. Uh, I linked to the, the uh, PR in the hackpad. That's it. Okay. Anyone else? Anything that they might have forgotten? Okay. I just added uh, that uh, we just published uh, the notebook user experience survey that uh, Peter Parente and the uh, his team at IBM had uh, developed. Uh, we had given them uh, uh, some of us had given them a couple rounds of feedback, <clears throat> and uh, they had just posted on the mailing list. We added it to the blog so that uh, it would be a little bit more visible. And so, if you can kind of post on various channels, the, obviously the more the more data we get on the the more people fill out the survey, the the more useful the data will be. Um, and um, otherwise, um, happy holidays, everyone. And uh, I just I just want to give uh, everybody a huge a huge huge thank you. Uh, the amount of work that you all are putting on the project is absolutely incredible. Uh, people who work for the project, people who are volunteers, people who are in industry, uh, I, it's, it's unbelievable. And, uh, and I want to thank you all. It's, it's been incredible. Uh, I, uh, I hope that with, uh, with the new people who are coming to Berkeley, with having a full-time project manager on the, uh, and, uh, and more people here, the, the coordination uh, will, will improve. I think that now that Carol, Carol is, uh, is, at, uh, is at Cal Poly uh, on documentation for the backbone of the project, that will also help us a lot because I think that's something that, that, has, been, uh, that has also been uh, very <clears throat> kind of a, a sore spot for, for our users. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and that's something that, that in the next year will, uh, will help a lot. Um, our users, but uh, but I wanted to give you guys uh, guys uh, all a, a huge thank you because you've done absolutely incredible work, um, and uh, we're very excited. I think a lot of the foundational work that has been going on this year is gonna is gonna pan out in 2016. And so, thank you. Please enjoy enjoy the holiday break, uh, get some rest, and uh, we'll see look, you all next look year. Look for a notebook 4.1 under the Christmas tree on the 25. <laughs> all right. Goodbye, everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Happy Christmas, everyone. Bye.